We're actually going to catch up with our homie Jason McNeil, owner of Fiberworks. It's an aluminum cap. It's an aluminum cap. So first thing I notice is this guy. I like to say gone through, but I'm so I hear it so much now that it's like before I even say it, I I think about it. here this is ridiculous I can't believe I can't believe how many people turned out today super humbled man it's it's pretty wild to see to see this many people come out with like such short notice I know we were blown away it was, it was amazing we definitely have to do it again thank you guys for coming out we we'll, we'll do. do it like annually yeah I, I think this if you guys think this needs to be an annual thing you guys can comment below and then maybe we do like a desert run after Ooh, Blake, what do you think? Next year, desert run after. Let's go, baby! Blake, this is a good idea. Thank you guys so much for coming out to this event. Dude, the homies, man, freaking really bringing the community community together, the pre-render community. This is our second one that we've done, and uh, we did one the year before COVID, and it was a really great turnout. We were really proud of it. And then this one just kind of just kind of blew me away, man. I can't believe yeah. how many people. Yeah. Amazing, right? It was amazing. Right, Blake? The off-road community came through hard. San Diego, people from Corona, Nor or Norco, like everywhere. South TJ, dude, it was like, it was awesome. Man. It was yeah. a beautiful day. We're actually gonna catch up with our homie Jason McNeil. Next episode, Fiberworks Truck, check it out. So anyways, we're here with Jason McNeil. We just, you, we just met. We've been like <laughs> internet friends and social media I'm friends. Talking for on the phone. We chat online for like two hours every day. We're in Fiesta Island. Jason's got his uh, Weitzel truck here, and we want to kind of show this thing off. It's an aluminum cap. It's an aluminum cap. So what year is that thing? 2016. So right when the aluminum cap came out, yeah. it's, it's actually 15. Yeah. But right when it came out, we were the first ones to go get one, and I'm like, I'm doing an aluminum cap. Yeah. And knowing how Ford d does the same cab over year and year, you know, it seems like they stay, stick with cabs for, yep. you know, five, at least five years. I'm like, let's get right on it. I've not had any issues with the aluminum. Yeah. A lot of people are like, what are you doing? You know, that's going to break. That's going to yeah. crack. That's, but no, it's been, it's been, uh, I mean, it's still pretty new, right? It's got, I think, 2,000, 2,500 miles on it. Mm -hmm. But so far, it's been an awesome, awesome pre-runner. Yeah, they, I mean, this cab, I've noticed, like, the aluminum, they, they changed. This is your standard Ford thing. The belt line goes down, right? Yep. And I've heard that's actually for visibility yeah. with the mirrors. I didn't ever know that until maybe a couple months ago. Uh, and then they have a different cut here. And then the one thing that I noticed with the aluminum cab is the windshield has, like, a really down, yeah. cool like a feature, like a style feature drop down in the middle. Jimmy Weitzel built a, a tried and true oh, truck. Yeah. It, it's been that, like his chassis seems like it's been that way for a long time. And it's the same kind of stuff. It's got, let's see if it has it. Yep, it has the, the mega upper arm. Yep. Like it's a huge upper arm. We start arm. off with the bottom floor. Like he does a plated floor. Yeah. So let's start with maybe specs on like the suspension. So your Weitzel front end, center mount, what's the travel on the thing? Front travel is 26, I believe. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the rear travel's uh, close to the, you know, probably around 32, 34. It's got all the, the big big Fox stuff, 4.5 bypasses, 3.0 coilovers. Like I said, tuned by SDG. Got all the house steering I'm looking at. Yeah, you're running uh, a rack the on there. Stuff, all the stuff, yeah, the big, big how rack with all the, their accessories. One of the things we put in this truck is a LS9. It's a supercharged motor. Yeah, so I think that's you, out of a Z06 or something. It, exactly. They actually race them in Le Mans, but so it's got titanium. It's a race motor, but it is a factory, you know, crate motor we, we purchased. It's a dry sump. That's why you're looking at some of the plumbing that Mark sure. did. It's a bullet bulletproof. Jimmy builds a bulletproof. He I've does. never had any anything crack or break or I mean, and, and we've had um, at least for that last Chevy truck, we had thousands of miles on that pre-runner. Yeah. Thousands. 
Yeah, I mean, it, that's it, what he's known for. It, it, I mean, obviously, you're not going at race speeds, and so, you know, these the McMillans and the... If you talk to any of these guys that actually use them, I mean, they're getting thousands of miles on a pre-run, yeah. right? And, I mean, the race is only 500 miles or 1,000 miles, and they're getting thousands of miles on sure. them. That, that's, that's one of the things, too. They're just built, built really tough. ID Designs hubs. Mm -hmm. What's your housing back there? It's a Dirt Tech. Dirt, dirt Tech housing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 10 inch Jumbo 40. I'm sorry, jump 36 spine. Jumbo 36. Two works. This is your glass, right? Yeah, I know we didn't know we were doing <laughs> this, but of course we own a fiberglass. You know, uh, we use it, right? Yeah. We use it. These are actually, the, all the fiberglass on it is uh, CAD designed. We build them in car carbon fiber. Yep. So they're super lightweight. Yeah, I, I like the, the, is this a, ra it's a wrap, right? Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, this is a wrap, but yep. yeah, this is a. This is your gloss. The gloss. Yep. I love that though, that's the raw. Fire paneling on the, around the whole, the whole chassis just to kind of keep it all nice and frenched in rocks and stuff getting in there. Well, one of my favorite things too that Jimmy does on a lot of these is, you know, there's no big down tubes here. Yeah. Like a lot of trucks yeah. because he starts the chassis ahead at the B pillar. So you can get away with doing this stuff if you have enough structure at your B pillar. And what you can see here is he's got it really nice. I mean, there's a there's a tube that that's wrapped up behind yep. the upholstery there, but there's it's really really supported there. And and like I said, it has a plate. There's plate shock. Yeah, shock it's a big bulkhead. Right? You can kind of see it starting there. Sure. But the whole the whole thing's plate. It's a it's it's really bulletproof. Yeah, this thing's gorgeous, and you can really see the structure. You know, everything's kind of packaged up. So that that's your dash too, right? That's our uh, Fireworks flagship dash that mm -hmm. we wrapped. We had it, you know, stitched, stitched and wrapped. Yep. Uh, it's got power shifter, Motec system, wired by uh, Mark Waddell. If you want to do the bump or the paddle, you can do either one. You're on a paddle shifted. Is it pneumatic? Is it air? It's uh, electric. It's electric. Okay. It's electric. And and that's a secondary, so that's almost like a sequential style. Correct. So you bump so you that can thing. Bump it or use the paddles on the dash. Gotcha. Motec. Motec. It's got two test street. Uh, string GPS's with two race radios. It's got the PCI switch, so you can yeah. go back and forth the race radios. One of my favorite things on the on the truck is not to get away from the dash, but uh, all the power we have. These are all power seats. So my son, my 13 year old son, we yeah. you can get them. You can get them as high, high or, or as low as you want. Sure. You know you can. It goes. It goes as far forward. I mean, your knees would hit the dash before you. And quick, what's but. cool about these ones that that's definitely some kind of a factory yeah uh, unit a lot, right a lot of these 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 luxury pre runners they put them on actuators and that just goes back and forth exactly this is a, like a seven way that's what I was gonna say you is know. you you don't just have a like a, a right forward and rear you right. have a bunch of adjustment exactly. there it's got heated seats and it's just nice to you know get in the back or get you know sure. loaded loaded easy and absolutely now are you running a single air conditioning or a dual so a lot of these pre-runners they run duals yeah but we actually got the biggest one that you they sell they just came out with it and because this because of the core forward cab and because how far back the dash is yeah we got a big big dog behind there yeah. so it really really blows nice nicely yeah it's gorgeous I like the batteries under there too. That's kind of a nice feature. Yep. To just have them floating under there in a little cavity, and then when you put the seat back, that's not visible anymore. Yep. So it's really easy to get to instead of being buried in the truck. What's the fastest it'll go? This one hit 120, almost 130, like 129. It's a four-speed, which is nice because it's, you got that extra gear. Sure. And you're not revving it out. It's a 480. 480. Copy that. And that's that Cole Hain. Cole Hain. Nice. Let's talk it's about you, your rear features. So I see a big ass box here, big storage box. So it's got plenty of room to put luggage, oils, fan belts, tools. Yep. Uh, we, we normally put just, you don't know where, what's gonna happen in Baja, right? So some yeah. seat bags and some, some different uh, different stuff in there, so. Yep, awesome. But this like, is, it's a lot of, there's a lot of space. These are your Fox coolers? Yeah. Right? And then are you running two trans and an oil? That's exactly right. Okay. And I like how that's kind of on a big modular substructure, so the bolts just come out. Up, yeah, it's easy to prep. So yeah. you can just take everything off of it. There's not right off of the main chassis there. Yeah, and then it opens that whole void up. Right. Looks like all Brown and Miller stuff. Yep. You did it right. <laughs> You're going to do it once. You do it right, right? Absolutely. You don't want to do it again. Yep. And then we got a spare drive shaft, jack handle, fire extinguisher. Got to have. Yep. Uh, the, only All your thing, basics. the only thing I get worried about these is fire fire. Yeah. That's the one thing you can't roll them, crash them, whatever. Yeah. I love the proportions of this thing. Yeah, thank you, thank you. 
So you can see the dirt tech under there. They've been around forever. That thing's got a huge top truss on it too. Yeah. That's not it's normal. Bulletproof housing, top and bottom. Yeah, so it's pretty wide open back here. Then you got your pan. What exhaust is this? It's a magna flow. We did we did duels. Yeah. So I can start this thing in my driveway at six in the morning and leave without the pissing up the neighbors. And the neighbors don't hate you too much. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's just so simple, you know. I, I like how the whole structure is kind of one big wall that comes from the pivots and just goes all the way to the back cell. And then your sway bar. I noticed your sway bar too. It's not in the stand. It's not in your traditional location. We did. Yeah, you see the arm. We did it the right. Bar going across in front of the the shocks. Yeah. Then you can see most of the truck. This is part of Jimmy's uh, structure here. You can see the plate, so it's a sandwich plate. It's four-sided boxed, like a rectangular box. This is all thick plate here, 3 16 too, all TIG welded. And then you can see the, you know, everything kind of forward of the of the link pivots is all just skid plate, belly pan. And you can kind of also see the lower link pivot, the upper link pivot, all that is part of a big bulkhead, like a vertical bulkhead that goes up to the shocks. So when you think about this thing, before you put all the chassis tubes into it, this whole lower platform is a big plated box structure that then goes back to these trailing arm pivots and then it goes up and goes up to the shock mounts. Right? I got that right. You, you nailed it. Okay, cool. Nailed it. <laughs> so there's some interesting stuff here. One thing I did want to ask you is on your process for the carbon, what do you, how, what's the process of making a carbon panel? Do you make an aluminum one first and then copy it? So people bring our, the carbon panels to us all the time. We, we can use those as molds as long as it's not welded on. The minute it's welded on or inside, then we have to copy, you have to do a mold of it and then yeah. you can make a, a okay. carbon part. But on all the flat panels, you can just lay carbon around the inside. There we and go. Then, and then you save those carbon, I'm sorry, those aluminum panels on the shelf if you want to like you know, replicate template them or whatever template yeah. them. You know. So first thing I notice is this guy. Yeah. So that was, a, that was a Mark Newham idea. Okay. We actually bought, I think it's off of a Mustang. Uh huh. Uh, we were looking for some kind of air cleaner. It couldn't be around because we had to fit the, the sump system. Yeah. Um, and so that's what he came up with. Works works really good. Obviously with an LS9, it's a supercharged, like I mentioned. Yep. So it, keeping the motor with with dust free is yeah. super important. Breathing super good important. and dust free. Super so yeah, your, your typical thing is you see the canister filter, right? Right, like a UMP or something similar to that. Probably vouch that this is breathing a lot better than those. It's but all the way around. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, yep. and, and it, really, to be honest with you, there wasn't really much more we could put, <laughs> you know, anywhere. Out of space. So. so this is your dry sump oil tank, oil right? Tank, Engine yeah. oil tank. Power steering fluid reservoir. Yeah. This water guy. Reservoir. Water reservoir. Okay. Now, what, this is your... Oil breather? That's what's a, what's that's that catch a, thing? That's an oil catch can. Okay. Catch can, and actually, it's kind of funky how they have a uh, fact we had to like double check our work. It's kind of funny how it, the, this LS9 breeze mm -hmm. goes into a catch can that's, that's hooked up to the sump tank. Yeah. Bump so, stops nestled in there. And then you can see all the adjustments for the bypasses. And then Jim, this is kind of Jimmy's thing as he, he gets a good, pretty good spread on here because I don't think the, does that, the windshield need to come off for this one? No. Okay. No, luckily not. Yeah. I've, I, I've, I've seen them where they had to, but not. Yeah. The and only thing that would obviously have to come out is the Tisco did a like a relay system system for the the uh, windshield wipers. Too. Sure. Yeah, and that's all that you know. This is this is huge. Having that and having a mechanism that works. I mean, see, some of that's retrofitted, but a lot of this is just full custom linkage. You know, to make your wipers uh, functional and because and yeah, normally the motors go right in here right where those reservoirs would go yeah it's like a huge situation here yeah. that doesn't work very well for packaging anything one of the kind of common things is with luxury pre-runners tube chassis trucks you're taking out the windshield and you're removing that center section in here like a removable piece you know so your part of your dash has to come out just to get your engine out and I know with Jimmy's like his his shock spread and, and the way he does things wider so it's able to come out yeah it comes out so it's pretty awesome these are these arms I'm talking about they're just a massive upper arm and that thing's huge do you feel a need for a front sway bar N I mean maybe yeah I, I would like to try to you asked me earlier what's next I would like to try different sway bars because it's not your standard you know your standard uh, sway bar that's all we've ever used and it works yeah. really well but I do feel like we might want to go like a different bar 
to see how that works. Copy. On the guys on the, on our on our trophy truck spec, we do have a front sway bar. I do like it, but I don't. I'd like to do something with the back first to see. Yeah, just that's tune gonna, it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But you know, it, you do get the sway. It, does it work good when you you know you're in those big rain ruts and going up mics and stuff like that? It works really really good. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind too much of the sway. You're not racing. Yeah. Swaying, you don't want to sway in racing, right? That's time in the air that you want to get traction. So, but in a pre-runner, it's not not so crucial. Sure, I, I think the stuff I've noticed with the sway bars is it just seems like it adds a sense of predictability and drivability, like knowing where that what it's right, doing and how it's limiting stuff. Where you can like set the car up right. for stuff, yes, because you know that that's there to, right. to hold things. I did notice so on this engine is that a factory those exhaust are, manifold? Those are those are factory exhaust manifolds, and then we went and did our deal from there. Yeah, yeah, added like a V-band down there and then laid out all the exhaust. That's cool. I've actually heard those flow really good. Like and that's why we didn't want to mess with them. Yeah. We didn't want to mess with them. That was like the first thought is, hey, let's use the factory exhaust band and it dumps out straight to the bottom. So you know, we, we decided to do that. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for showing the truck. I'd love to see it again and riding this thing at some point, you know. It's just a, a gorgeous machine. So you did good. Nice to meet you. We'll just say bye to everybody and thank you. Like Thanks and subscribe, comment. Let us know what you want us to cover and we'll try to get after it. Thanks, Dave. Hey, nice meeting you, man. Yeah. I like to say gone through, but I'm so, I hear it so much now that it's like before I even say it, I, I think about it. <laughs> don't, 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 yeah, that's, that's what YouTube does. They'll, they'll pick, you guys will pick gone us through. apart. But you know what? I, I say dude and I've just accepted that that's just what I say. So when people were like, dude, why do you say dudes? I'm sorry, man, it's just, it's embedded in me. So you know what, Morgan, embrace the I'm gone broken. through. <laughs> oh, yeah. Embrace the gone through, because it's, it's good. Yeah.